Good afternoon everyone. I think that fusion stuff, by the way, is incredibly cool. It's an amazing science. Uh, I'm here to talk about something a bit more mundane, industrial heat decarbonization. I think, as we all know, heat is the largest end use of energy in the world, and industry is the largest piece of that. So you would think, with it being the largest piece of the world's largest energy market, that it would be a focus for decarbonization. As you can see from the chart, that's definitely not the case. It's hardly changed in the last 10 years. So why is that? Why is the industry not decarbonizing? Why are they not electrifying? Well, the first reason is that it's really, really cheap to burn fuel to make heat. If you're burning fuel at about $3 per million BTU, that's less than a one cent per kilowatt hour equivalent. And that's an environment where industrial users are typically paying you know, about 10 cents, somewhere around there, for their energy. Even if you get past that problem, it's not actually going to reduce emissions, because as well as being cheap, it's also very efficient to burn fuel, which means the emissions are relatively low. It's about, in round numbers, 200 grams per kilowatt hour. And that's half of what a typical grid carbon intensity is. So what that means is, even if that grid decarbonizes by more than 50%, it's still going to be less emissions to keep burning fuel. So what's the answer? Well, that's where we come in. We provide low-cost, zero-emissions heat. And we do that by concentrating sunlight onto pipes containing water. The water boils, we have steam, which we can then use for the industrial process. Now, in another part of the solar field during the day, instead of water in the pipes, we have molten salt, which we heat up and store in a giant tank so that we can produce heat both day and night. That gives us certain key advantages. It's the cheapest to build, it's the cheapest to operate, and compared to, for example, a PV array, it's a tiny fraction of the cost. Now, the, um, if you look at one specific example, California, from a square kilometer of land, will produce three times as much steam as a PV array and a fraction of the cost. In fact, in California, we're cheaper than gas most of the time. Now, we've been doing this for a while. This is not theoretical. We've built a lot of systems. We started in 2010, the first installation. The most recently completed one uh, takes 2,000 tons of water, two kilotons of water every day, and boils it to make steam. Peak power productions, 330 megawatts. So what we've shown with that, that most recent one, is the technology works, obviously, the economics work, people want to buy it, that we can scale the economics and we have a track record. And that's what's enabled us to go to the next stage, which is we recently announced a, a deal for a 1.5 gigawatt system, which takes 14 kilotons of water every day and boils it to make process steam. Now, in contrast, our competition and 2023 is back where we were in 2010-2011 with prototypes, proofs of concepts. Most industrial users, for very good reasons, are risk averse. They won't take a new technology and plug it into a large industrial system. So while the competition is busy building pilots and proof of concept, we are taking orders for full-scale systems. Uh, we have 42 projects in our pipeline, which would represent 10 billion of revenue if it all converted. Of course, it won't, but gives you an idea of scale. And we make that revenue by offering steam as a service. Our customers don't deploy capital, their own capital. They enter into a long-term contract with us to supply steam. Now, we use project finance to build the projects so that the company itself doesn't have to be very capital intensive. In fact, it's capital light. Our EBITDA margins are very high, and our growth Projected growth is also very steep. So we look very much like a technology company at the whole core level. And it's at that level that we're currently about to launch our Series B fundraising effort. It's a 35 million raise. The use of proceeds are to finish building out our team, to do more project development, more of those 47 projects, and for working capital. 
So we're around for the rest of today and tomorrow. And uh, if you'd like to learn more, seek me out or my colleague, Brian, who's here in the audience. And thank you very much.